Today I want to talk to you about how quitting my first ever high paying job changed my life. We're going to jump straight into this because this is a topic that I'm extremely, extremely passionate about. You may have seen that I've made a few videos on this topic of, you know, quitting jobs and my story about my job and how I hated it, my first ever job right out of college. And I really speak to what happened in the moment, what happened when I was in that action, what happened when I had the thoughts that I was having and when I just really dreaded going to work, when I really had to mentally prepare myself before I went into the building. When I felt like at any moment I could be let go because I was getting yelled at, cussed out, all of that stuff. And some people really don't think stuff like that can happen at work, but it happens every single day. People are mistreated at work every single day. People hate their jobs. It doesn't matter if it's a high paying job, a low paying job. It doesn't matter how upscale the work is or like how highly operational the function is that you do at your job. Anybody can hate their job and anybody can be going through a silent battle that you know nothing about and that is what this video is going to be about. And the overall message I want to give in this video is that once you take control of what's going on in your life, your life is going to start to improve. So I'm not going to keep boring you with the same story over and over again. If you want to know the full story behind what I went through at my previous job, you can check out the video I have linked up here, but I am going to give you a little bit of a synopsis of what happened just in case you're new. And I wanna preface this by saying, yeah, it was a high paying job. Everyone has like a different idea of what a high paying job is. Your cost of living is gonna play a role in it. But for me, I was 21, 22, you know what I mean? And I was making 80 something K per year. To me, that's a lot of money for a 21 year old. I, to this day, I have not met a 21 year old that makes 80 something K. And plus I lived in an area where the cost of living was extremely low and I was putting away money like crazy. So for me, that was a lot of money. I had a lot of disposable income. And the reason I'm starting the video off with that is because a lot of people try to say, well, that's not a lot of money. Okay, well, whatever a lot of money is to you, think about that number in your head and then keep watching this video because that's really not the point. The point is it was a lot of money to me. And the reason I'm saying that is because a lot of times when we're in jobs that we hate, when we're in jobs that we feel like we're trapped in and restricted and we don't have a say, we don't have a voice, how we feel doesn't matter, what we think doesn't matter. You feel like there's nothing you can really do about your job because they're waving that dollar over your head talking about some work. Come on, where are you going to go making this kind of money? You can't go nowhere in the city trying to make this kind of money. You can't go anywhere else. Where are you going to go? You don't have the experience. You don't know what you're doing yet. You're lucky we still keep you like stuff like that. That's toxic. And I heard stuff like that every single day, no matter how upset I got, no matter how frustrated I got, people saw that and they they kind of fed off of that energy like, okay. We're getting to him a little bit and I'm a strong person and a lot of things really don't get to me. But after a while, like after working every single day, after working 12 hour days every single day for six to seven days a week, and then the seventh day you get a break because you work eight hour days on that seventh day, it gets pretty ridiculous. You start to question things about yourself. You're like, you, you don't even feel like you're really human anymore because when you work that much and you don't like what you do, you don't really have a lot to look forward to because when you go home, it's either sleeping or eating. And a lot of times I skipped the eating and went straight to sleeping. Not on purpose, but because I was just that tired. Next thing I know, it was time to wake up and go to work. And you really don't have time for yourself when you do that stuff. When you go to work and you're anticipating, oh, I wonder what I'm going to get yelled at about today. And I'm just being honest. Like, yeah, you got to be positive throughout these situations. And I'm extremely positive. But when you walk into an operation that's that negative, it happens. You can be positive every single day and not realize the impact of the negativity around you. That stuff is going to seep in you after a while, especially when you're young and you, you, you learned and you were told and taught that work was supposed to be one way, but it was a completely different way. The stuff they taught you in school, it doesn't run that smooth. The way people are supposed to treat you, you know how they have in those pictures and those catalogs about jobs? How they got the folks with the hard hats on and with the, you know what I'm saying, the uniforms on, smiling, looking like they're happy to go to work. That's what I expected. And that was not my reality. Yeah, I got paid well. Yeah, I got to do really cool things for myself. Yeah, I got to provide for myself. Yeah, I got to help some people out, monetarily speaking. Yeah, I felt good about myself. Yeah, I felt confident. But that stuff means nothing when you feel like you're just unhappy in general. You have that, that's down here, but fulfillment and happiness and feeling healthy, that's up here. And I didn't feel any of those things. So what did I have to do? I had to wise up. I had to really open my eyes to my circumstances. I had to realize, you know what? 
I'm not bound to anything. I'm not married. I don't have any kids. I don't have a girlfriend right now. So there's no like super hardcore reason why I should stay in the same state. Yeah, I had family. Yeah, I had friends and I loved them dearly. But I had to look at what is going to make Reggie Bryant, that's my name if you didn't know, what's going to make Reggie Bryant happy? What's going to make me happy in this situation? So what if I have to move to a different state? So what if I have to move across the country? I really don't care where I have to go at this point. At that time in my life, I felt miserable. I felt fatigued. My muscles were sore. My mind was sore. My soul was sore. And there was no amount of money that I could pay to heal the way that I was feeling at the time. I could have been making a million dollars a year at that time, and I still would have felt miserable. You don't know how many times I was like, screw it. F this job, like that's how I felt about it. You don't know how many times I was like, this money isn't worth it. Like there was one month I made $12,000 cause I just off the strength of doing overtime. And I was like, this still isn't worth it. I didn't feel like I had any freedom. People needed me so much, they called me in all the time. But when I was in there, they didn't even appreciate what I was doing. I was doing physically intense work. I was managing people. I was pay I was doing payroll. I was doing everything, pretty much every function you could think of. And if you're wondering, my job title at the place was an area manager and they worked me like a dog. And I have an extreme work ethic. So like those two things, they really don't mix. When you're prideful about the work that you do and when you have an intense amount of integrity and you go in the job wanting to do an extremely good job every single day and you're still not appreciated, you're still not celebrated, the people above you don't respect you or like you, the people below you don't respect you or like you. Now, I'm not going to say all of them, but enough of them to where it got to me felt a certain way about me. A lot of it had to do with me being young and it changed my life when I decided to say, you know what? Cool. Then I just got quiet. Then nothing really, really, really nothing bothered me at the point when I got quiet. I just had that type of attitude like whatever, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna kill it, I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna do it all over again every single day. Whatever, who cares if you fail tomorrow, you're gonna improve the next day, it's all good. They're gonna keep talking, they're gonna keep threatening, they're gonna keep making it seem like you're not doing a good job. They're gonna keep putting pressure on you just to see if they can get a reaction out of you, whatever. Just remain calm, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing good. I had to hype myself up. I had to give myself time during the mornings to give myself a routine to like meditate, to get my mind together, to, to stay calm, to get myself together, to understand like you're here for a reason. If they wanted to let you go, they would have done it a long time ago. It's not even beneficial to keep somebody who's a literal liability at work. You're not a liability, you're an asset, keep going. The people that work for you, some of them might give you mouth because you're young, but they still need you. They still need you to put their payroll in. They still need you to sign them up for overtime. They still need you to do every single thing for them to function properly as employees. You're really good at planning. You're really good at planning ahead. You're really good at what you're doing, even though you're young. You, f you fail a lot on your face. You work in the trenches a lot. You really think you're not benefiting? Do you really think you're not learning from this? I had to really hype myself up and pick myself up out of the mud because no one else is going to do it for me. Yeah, I had mentors, but it's not like I saw them like that. It's not like I had 12 hours a day to be in the room with them. Nah, it was just me, me, and me. Constantly going through hardships, constantly going through mental battles, constantly wondering like, am I even good enough financially if I just walk up out of here? Because I text my mom several times, like, look, I'm out of here. I'm getting tired of this. It didn't matter if it was during the day. It didn't matter if it was at night because I definitely worked both day and night shift in my entire time being at that company. That was just how it felt. But like I said, when I got quiet, when I got focused, I just kept improving every single day. I kept improving my skill set. I kept making a case for myself. I kept just looking at what I went through on a day-to-day -day basis. I was like, man, as young as I am, I don't know anybody. And this is just straight facts. This isn't even like to boast or anything. I just, I didn't know anybody who could face what I faced on a daily basis, remain calm, remain healthy and remain stable and keep improving every day. It was an extreme amount of adversity. You go through living life one way, you know, you go through college thinking that things are supposed to be this way, and then you get out of college and then everything is just adversarial and everything is a fight. Everything is the, I gotta jump through hoops to succeed through this. Everything is mental turmoil. Everything is an argument. Everything just seems so negative. And I had to look at what I was thankful for. I was thankful for where I lived. I was thankful for the money that I had. I was thankful for my car. I was thankful for who I was becoming as a person. I wasn't where I wanted to be yet, but I was thankful for what was happening. There was literal magic happening beneath that frustration, beneath that pain. 
And every day, to this day, I still thank God for it. But you know what? I still wasn't happy about my overall situation. And I knew that only Reggie can do something about it. There's no one else, just me. And so I did what I had to do as I improved my skills. I was in conversations with other people. You know what I'm saying? It was like a toxic relationship. I was talking to other companies. I was looking at what my options were. It was like the most toxic relationship you can think of. They had just enough of compliments in there. They had just enough in bonuses, just enough money to be like, you know what? Maybe this ain't so bad. You know what? We've been doing good for a whole week straight. That's, that's something. They've been praising me for about a week straight. They've been telling me how I've been doing good for about a week straight. Maybe they ain't so bad. But what about all the other bad days? So once I kept building on my skill set, once I built that credibility, once I got some awards and all these things, I'm like, you know, these are tools in my arsenal to do good in these interviews for all these other companies I'm looking at. And a bunch of them didn't pay worth a crap. A lot of them, as soon as they told me what the pay was, I ended the interviewing process right there. I was like, uh-uh, nah, I'm good. Even though I used to tell myself all the time, you know, I would take a pay cut. Yeah, I said that. I didn't really mean it, though. Low key, I was like, I could take a pay cut and still be dealing with the same stuff I'm dealing with now. If I'm gonna still with the same, if I'm gonna be dealing with the same stuff I'm dealing with now, I'm at least gonna go up in pay. Especially if I gotta move to a different city or state. I'm sorry. And then one day, I got on the phone with a good friend of mine, and he was like, Hey man, have you heard of this company? I'm not gonna say what company it is, but it's an extremely technologically advanced company, and I'm heavy into tech. You know, that's what my major was set around: industrial engineering, technology. Industrial technology management was my minor. So, like, I just felt that this was destined for me. And it was because as soon as I applied, as soon as I, you know, got in the interview, they, they knew they wanted me right away. And I knew I wanted them. Flew out here 36 hours away from where I originally lived. And the rest is history. And in between there, as soon as I got the job, I definitely went upstairs, printed off my not two week, not one week, not three week notice, but one day notice. Hey, I'm leaving tomorrow. Had them floored. They didn't know what to say. They wanted to say something, and I wanted them to say something. I was like, please, make my day. Please, piss me off on my last day here. And I promise I'll walk off right now. That's how, I, when you have the power, they don't, have, they don't got the power no more. That was just how good it felt. That was exhilarating, and that changed my life because I moved to a different state, and I didn't really know nobody besides that one friend I had out here, and he ended up moving a few months later, which is fine. But I made something of myself out here. I just I started my YouTube channel since I've been out here. I progressed in my career since I've been out here. My pay has only gone up since I've been out here. And you know the crazy thing? When you're in a chaotic environment and you think that that's all that's out there and you think, well, where else are you going to go making this kind of money out here? Plenty of places, my friend. Plenty of places. I didn't even know how good it could be. I didn't even realize you can have your actual scheduled days off have three to four days off and still make six figures. I didn't know that it's actually not normal for managers to treat you that way. Like it might be common, but it's not normal behavior. Keep in mind, I was a manager myself and managers were treating me that way. You get what I'm saying? And I also understood that you get in life what you tolerate and you get in life what you expect. And I was expecting BS. I was expecting people to mistreat me. I was expecting some mess to happen every single day. I was tolerating disrespect. I was tolerating them having me work all those days. I was tolerating it all for what? For some money? And I didn't even think about the opportunity cost because like I was working a lot of hours, but if you look at how much I actually made that year, which was like 82 something thousand, technically I was working minimum wage for the amount of money I was getting. Maybe not minimum wage, but you get what I'm saying. I was working a dumb amount of hours and yeah, I made a lot of money, but it was an extreme amount of hours. I didn't have any time to myself. I didn't have any free time. I used to get excited when I had like a full day off. Hey, you know what? For all your hard work this week, don't even come in tomorrow. Just just relax. Take tomorrow off. I would get excited. And then you know what I would do that whole day on my day off? Not sleeping, not relaxing, being on edge, wondering, are they going to call me in? Because they used to do stuff like that. Not anymore. I didn't realize there was a whole nother side that, wow, you don't even have to worry about getting called in. You just work your scheduled days, you go home, you relax. You do what you want to do on your days off. You can make friends, you can date, you can do whatever it is you want to do. You can just relax. You can sit at home for every single day, all day if you want to. There's a lot of stuff you can do. There's a whole different side that I didn't even realize existed. You can check out new movies, you can read new books, you can meet new people. 
You can work out as much as you want to. You can eat good like you've always been doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's just a different way of looking. And, yeah, I'm far, further away from my family, granted. But I still get to see them. I still get to talk to them. They're further away. I get it. That part does suck. But, you know, there's not anything really stopping me from getting on a plane and going to see them. And I'm a lot happier. And I wrote a lot about this stuff in my book. But, like, there were some thoughts I had that no human should ever think. Ever. When you consider walking in front of a heavy moving vehicle just to get a day off, that's when it's time to draw a line and really assess where you're at in life right now. But that's how it changed my life. And it also helped me impact other people's lives. Because when I had someone working for me who was in the same boat as I was that was 21, that was 22, going through some type of mistreatment purely because of their age, I nipped that in the bud. And I made sure everybody knew that I was not going to tolerate that. Or we were going to be having a different conversation. And what that different conversation looked like was me walking somebody out. Because I don't play the whole mistreatment. I don't play the whole hostile work environment type of deal. I just don't. And you know what? They stopped mistreating him. And you know what happened very quickly after? He got promoted. And to this day, he still thanks me for having those conversations with him, helping him get that mindset, helping him get that strength, and not, you know, allow other people to deter him from pursuing the career that he's doing really, really well in. Don't let anybody throw you off your rocker just because somebody has something negative to say. They're just mad because they're not there where you're at as young as you are. They could be twice your age. It doesn't matter how much experience they think they got. If you can do the job, you can do the job. And from a financial standpoint, it changed my life because this channel literally would not exist if I didn't go through those experiences because, like I said, I was afraid of being let go. I was afraid of a lot of things like, because the, the way they treat you, the, the psychological warfare they like put on you is ridiculous. And so like, it had me on edge. I was like, man, am I gonna lose my job? Like, what was, what's going on over here? And I just had to realize, I gotta have my finances together. I can't be out here just spinning loosely. So that's why this whole financial channel even exists because I'm like, Here's how you make sure you got yourself a, a, an emergency fund, you got some financial security about yourself, you have some confidence about yourself. You don't have to tolerate this kind of crap. Get yourself five figures saved up in the bank. I'm talking 20, 25K in the bank. There's not a lot of people that can tell you really anything because if you had to lose your job, you got that you're sitting on and it's not gonna take you that long to find another job, especially if you've gained a good skill set. But it builds that confidence. And there's not a lot of things that people can tell you. There's not a lot of fear that people can put within you. But having those things and working on yourself is going to get you to a place where you don't fear anything. And you have extreme amounts of confidence. And that is how it changed my life. So my message to you is when you take control of your situations, when you take control of your life, when you take a stand for what you believe in and you take a risk and it comes out positively, you know you've made the right decision. You can't stay in analysis paralysis like I did for a few months. You can, but it'll only prolong what you're meant to do. Don't allow fears that people put on you. Don't allow the, the sayings of, what else are you going to do? What other work are you going to do? Where else are you going to go and make this kind of money? You ain't nothing. What makes you think you can do that? Don't let them cast their insecurities upon you. That's all I'm saying. But anyway... That is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.